Welcome back to the channel, and this time we are looking at Page Puncher's Batman. And from what I've seen in a lot of the comments, people don't like the green outfit. I understand, we're very accustomed to seeing him in the gray and black. And that's what this video is about, turning him into a gray and black Batman. And of course, adding a custom cape, etc. Let me give you a look of what we're going to get to in this first clip. And then I'll show you what I did to take those steps to make it a gray and black Batman with a few added touches to make him a little bit better than what was in the package. Let's get started. Let's have a quick overview of the figure before we take it apart. This is the olive green that comes with the figure straight out of package. And as you can tell, there's a lot of detail in here. There's a lot of soft plastic, so it's going to be very easy to take it apart. That cape, however, is pegged in the back, and there's an ugly square peg that you may have to cut. This is a figure already taken apart. A little bit of heat goes a long way, and as mentioned, this peg in the back of the cape you may need to cut it just because it's so well glued and keep in mind that if you trim it down you'll have to add putty to it to hide it also keep in mind that nobody's going to see it it's going to be under a new cape the pegs in the front well you just have to heat those up and very carefully unglue them by prying it open with a flat screwdriver these abs are very very easy to come apart you don't need a lot of heat and it doesn't have a lot of mobility the belt on the actual trunks that's glued in really well you may just have to leave it as is as you may tear those trunks by re uh, taking apart the belt I left mine in place the rest of the pegs come off easily as well you heat them with a the hairdryer Pry it open with a flat screwdriver and then remove the peg. And you'll have to repeat the process to reinstall the pegs. And I'll show you that later on in the video. But as you can see here, everything is a soft plastic. And we'll be using paint that adheres well to this soft plastic. These are the pieces you're gonna have to dremel if you want to change the color entirely. You can't dremel the back because that's got actual texture. You can only dremel the flat surface that is going to be in the hidden joints. The rest of it, you'll just have to paint. Same thing with the elbows and the knees. Same process. Just be very careful. You actually have to grind it down, not just sand it. And of course, the shoulders, they peg in very easily. Actually, there's plenty of room in that shoulder connection that you don't have to worry about the paint rub. So let's get started. Now this is a question that comes up continuously in the Facebook groups and of course even at the beginning of my videos. What paint do I use? What do I use to paint it? I'm using the Vallejo Premium Paints. They are a multi-surface paint. It is a permanent paint. It is self-leveling. I use an airbrush because it looks that much better as an end result. I do some hand painting, but only on the fine details. And I can do some dry brushing with it. That's as far as I go with the actual brush painting. The rest of it is actually with the airbrush. And there's a big reason why you'll want to use the airbrush in this particular sequence. Now, the technique that I used is I painted everything in the black instead of just doing a paint wash. I used a black paint, I went 
along all of the crevices, all of the contours, and then I came back over that with a gray paint. If you want to see a deeper detailed sequence of this, I'll leave a link at the top and you can watch the video on the Dragon Ball Z pod. The reason I want you to see that one is it's a lot more extensive work than it is on this figure and larger pieces so you'll be able to see it that much easier. But as you can tell here, the airbrush leaves a nice soft transition between the darks and lights and it really brings out the detail and the texture in the figure. So you don't have to do a lot of the dry brushing and this is so much quicker. Now going into the belt, it is a black and this time I'm using a rub and buff in the gold color. And it makes it really, really easy just to dry brush it on and give it that worn look to the gold pouches. And it looks that much nicer by bringing out the detail. Let it dry, cover it up with a sealant of your choice and you're set. That's it for the belt. Now replacing the pins isn't as bad as it sounds. The trick is to heat the actual item first, not the pegs, but the leg where the pegs go. So you'll have to reassemble the leg, make sure you have the right parts going to the correct piece, right and left, and they are marked in case you do get lost. And make sure those peg holes are aligned. Heat up the leg where the joint is. It's gonna be very soft. Take a pair of needle nose pliers and then push it into place. Now depending on the peg or the hole that it's going into, it may be not properly aligned and that can inhibit it from going all the way through to the other side. So you'll have to take a piece of material, in this case I use a dowel, and I place it underneath the other side that did not go through, thereby forcing the actual pieces to align and then I can push it through like this one did. Now be very careful, it is a soft plastic and if you use a tool, in this case I'm using these needle nose pliers, you can actually mar the surface. So use the flat side of the pliers, if not use another dowel to push it in. If it doesn't work, reheat it and try it again. If that doesn't work, reheat it and go in from the other side of the hole that it did not go through. Just take your time, be patient. Do the same for each leg and then you'll have to do the same for the elbows and those are a little smaller. So be very careful because these pieces are soft plastic and when you heat it, it will be even softer and if you leave a mark, it's going to leave a mark. It's going to be difficult to erase it. So be very careful when you push those pins back in place. So we've made it to a custom cape. Now this is not a 
tape video, but I'll give you the essence of what I went through to produce it. And yeah, it takes a few prototypes to get to this process. Now I did cut it, as you can see the graph here on the mat. It is a smaller cape, it is a seven by eight in width. And I've cut it down at the top to fit that hole. Unfortunately, because I did the sewing, it made it smaller, so I had to recut that hole for the neck. But as you can tell, I went ahead and I ironed in my pleats. And this is where I'm gonna do my stitching. The stitching on this cape is on the outside. The ribs are on the outside and those are gonna show. So it's gonna be tricky to keep it all even and straight because there's only gonna be four wires. So only four of these scallops carry four wires. That's gonna be two at the front and two in the back. The others you can sew tight because they're not gonna be carrying a wire. In case you wanna see the settings on the sewing machine, there they are. Take it to your sewing machine, be patient, be careful. Take your time sewing the cape. It is not a race. You just gotta make sure you're accurate. Now the most important part about this cape is the way it mounts. The way I mounted it is I drilled two holes in the back of the net. Those are the two wires coming from the ribs that I put into the back or the seams. I left the wire exposed at the top about a quarter inch and I pulled it up a little further and I applied super glue only to the wire, not the body. Add it to the wire so that it glides in or slides in with the super glue and holds in place. Then you can tack the back with some of the other glue that you may have. You'll have to do the same to the front. If you use super glue on the actual cape against the body, that's it. You won't be able to reposition it. So this is our finished look with the cape. And there's a big reason why you want the wires locked into the body, not just glued against the surface. They can support more weight. If you just have them glued against the surface, they can lose their rigidity and the cape will fall. But if the actual wire is embedded at least a quarter inch into the actual body, after you drill that hole, then this is the look you will have continuously. That wire will be able to support the shape that you give it, and it will support the weight of that cape, giving you more dynamics. Here's the before and after for those of you who want to see such a thing. And there's the plastic out of the box on the left, and this is a dynamic cape that's on the right. As far as color, yeah, not much difference, but both figures are dynamic. This one has even more dynamics because we have more things added to it. And this is also the one that has the grapnel that I had to custom make. And the grapnel is a combination of two pieces. And you've all seen that round grapnel in a lot of those packages. I cut off both ends and I added a gun handle from another figure. I glued it on after drilling into that rounded piece and then locking it into place, giving you that actual grapnel look. And yes, you can add a wire to the end if you like. It's all up to you. Now a lot of you recognize that holster. Well, that's because you have it on one of your figures and that's from Red Hood. I did something else with my figure, so I had these left over and I decided to use it for this particular project. All I did was glue in a strap of uh, pleather around it. I carved it out a little bit more to accommodate for that grapnel gun, and that's it. It is held on by friction. It is not glued to the leg. So it makes it removable for other views with the figure. So notice how only four wires in this cape are able to give us the dynamics you see here in each of these different poses. That is a 26 gauge, actually, I'm sorry, a 24 gauge wire, and it works really well to support the weight of this pleather. But let me show you a few things that I know some of you are thinking about, especially if you wanna mount it on a motorcycle. Let me show you what that looks like.
Unfortunately, as great as this figure looks, he's not designed to do any bike riding. No motorcycles for him. He just doesn't have the posability to do so. Even if you do some of the mods to it, they're just not enough to take him to really ride the motorcycles properly. Now, I'm gonna leave a video for each one of these motorcycles that you see lighted here, as I have a video for each one. And you can see the project on each one of those videos. Here he is on the second motorcycle from the movie, which I did repaint and add lights to. He just can't reach across to hold the, the handlebars. And if you do have him reach across, he just looks really odd. But this is about all he can do with this particular pose. About the best you'll be able to do is have him look like he's mounting or dismounting the motorcycle. And it looks okay, but it just doesn't give it that full sense of riding the motorcycle. Now, I do have two of the other cycles, which is the one from the White Knight, and of course the very first one that was released, the Death Metal motorcycle. But even then, those motorcycles, well, he just really isn't meant to ride a motorcycle. This is what he looks like on the White Knight cycle. He looks better. He can reach the handles because the legs are actually positioned differently. But he is really, really tight in that fit. The cape looks great though. I really do like the way it looks. But he can't lean over far enough to make it look believable. Let's have one last look on the last, actually the first cycle that was released. He looks better because of the way his legs are positioned, but only one hand can grab the handle. The other is a fist and he just can't reach it. The cape looks great though, again, he just doesn't have the full sense of riding that motorcycle. But what does he look like with the head swap from the figure that was made for that motorcycle? Let's take a look because somebody did request that. Well, this is what he looks. I did a head swap and this is the final result. It looks pretty good. It, it, it works out okay. I, I only have that one figure though and this is a commission piece, but it's going with the original head to the new owner. But for video purposes, there's your close up. There's a reason for you to come back to the channel. I've got two more projects in the works. Black Canary and Black Adam. So make sure you come back to see the finished product. I'll let you have a sneak peek at what I'm working on right now. And just to remind you, I do have an Amazon associate account. So the links will be in the description. If you need to pick up any of those supplies to complete your project, consider using those links. Now I do get a kickback from those links, but they are there for your purpose of using those to complete your projects and making them look that much more dynamic. We'll see you here next time. Thanks for watching.